Jeff, what's the buy box? What is that underwriting criteria that says, Paul, we've got to jump on this? Yeah, absolutely. So if you ask me this question, Chris, you know, two years ago before I met Paul, I'll give you my reads slash institution answer, right? I'll show you my Excel spreadsheet with 15 different tabs and show you at what rent growth, wow, yada, yada, yada. But Paul's really helped me to simplify it, right? So our buying box is super simple. You know, 75 pad and above in an area that ha has a, you know, uh, positive and strong population growth. And we need at least 30% equity from day one, kind of like Team Rod's, you know, typical buying criteria. And if it fits those three, we're going to take a deeper, much deeper look at it. If it doesn't, we're going to move on to the next deal. That's it. Takes about a few minutes to figure it out. How are y'all sourcing your deals? Do you have certain markets that you've already checked to see population growth is good? So you're just soliciting those particular markets. What does that look like for your lead generation acquisition side? Yeah, so that's a good question. And that's something that we're working on right now. That's always a work in progress. I think we've done really well by, you know, word of mouth. To be quite honest, Chris, people know us as the RD guys, right? So they think of us instantly whenever they have a deal. So we work well with brokers off market. We work well with sellers. When I first started buying, I bought about two parks before I met Jeff. And, you know, I did it old school way because that's where I came from. I mean, I drove for dollars. I would drive into parks, meet the managers, look around and go, wow, this thing has tall grass. I mean, this park's halfway, you know, it's 50% vacant. I'm seeing a sign on the door. We're closed. You know, I look for all these little things, right? So then I start looking up information. But since Jeff and I started teaming up, you know, we've done a really good job. One, social media has been big for us. Every time we do due diligence happens, a deal we close, anything we put under contract, we post. And that brings, that drums up business for us. I mean, instantly. So, and then we do a good job of taking those names and information and people and plugging them into our spreadsheet so that we constantly tap on them. We also pull information ourselves, but we're working towards also building a little machine that can be tapping on it like we did in the wholesale business, right? Something that's always, it's a pipeline of trying to build that. We've just been fortunate with word of mouth. So what do people expect? Tell me the pros and the cons of the RV park. And then if it's different, tell me the mobile home park pros and cons. So and Jeff can, you know, chime in too, you know, as far as the mobile home parks, pros are they're stationary, right? They're in place. They're not going anywhere. You can't move. It costs five to seven thousand dollars, depending on the market to move them. Right. So that's that consistency that people really like about mobile home parks. Lenders like that. Buyers like it. Right. You know, that's great. On the other hand, it's more challenging to evict someone. Right. That's right. not a paying tenant. They own the home. So now you got to go through all that. Well, we've gotten really good at that. So we understand what to do, but that's probably, you know, a downside. Another thing is, is that being that they are stationary, when you buy a park, they're really old. You have to remove a bunch of them. It does get pretty costly. So that's a, like a win lose type thing. It depends on, you know, the market and how well the mobile home is built. I think the same goes for the RV park, right? You have some transient that you have to handle. So you have management that you have to put processes and systems in place to make sure that, you know, things are automated, to make sure that things are running smoothly, to keep your reviews up. So it's a little more, you know, managerial. But, you know, another thing is in the Southeast, it's easy to, you know, remove a RV tenant. You don't have to go through an eviction in Alabama. You're under the same rules as hotels. So that way you can remove a tenant like that, you know, and how does that work? Dex, give me, paint a picture for me. Are you hooking up to the hitch and pulling it out of your yard? <laughs> so, I mean, listen, when you're dealing with RV parks and mobile home parks, I mean, if you're not dealing with absolutely class A, then you have to lay the law down. Like you have to have clear expectations <laughs> whenever, you know, you bring somebody in, like your property manager needs to have a set of rules. They need to be passed out to everyone. Everyone needs to understand when they move into this park, these are the rules. X, Y, and Z. If you break this, you're gone. If you do not leave, we will hook up and pull it out. And then you can go find it down the road. And it sounds harsh, but sometimes you have to be, you know, pretty straightforward. And that's yep. how we run a clean park. We want to give safe community, a friendly community. We want people to, you know, be able to spend time with each other and be able to walk outside and enjoy the fresh feel of a park, right? We're not slum right. lords. We don't put up with alcohol. We don't put up with domestic violence, late, loud music, stuff like that. We want a nice, clean, family-friendly community. So we got to uphold the rules and stand by them. 
that makes sense. And I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. The, if you don't have the law down then people are going to abuse it, that's why rules are there. What you got, Jeff? Yeah. One call I was going to mention is that, you know, one thing we find more challenging than let's say other asset classes, single family apartments and mobile home parks on the RB is that a lot of lenders are not yet open for this asset class. So some of the acquisitions were done in the past. The majority of them are through salary financing with one exception with the local banks. So same thing will carry over for the cash or refinance, right? Because our business model is to go in, in, improve the efficiency of the operation, increase the rent, increase the NOI to a cash or refinance. So it is more challenging when it comes to the debt financing portion, but also we're seeing, you know, things are changing more and more lenders willing to come into the space. But as of now, I'll, I'll put that as a comp for our RV space compared to other asset class. Okay. I'm going to come back to the lender situation in just a second. I'm still curious about the mobile home side of eviction because every, listen, I've sold cars, I've got businesses. And when it comes to the collection side, that's the side that is just not glamorous. That's the side nobody enjoys. Everybody in, it loves the smiles, the shaking of the hands, the celebration of a new thing. But then when it comes day where they're behind and late fees start and that kind of deal, everybody's attitude gets sour. So on the mobile home side, you said that eviction process was a little different. These people own their homes. They yeah. paid the five to 7,000 to have it moved into. So it's going to cost them five or 7,000 to move it out. What does that process look like? So we can really go down a rabbit hole with this stuff, but I'll keep it very high level. High level. Yeah. So the main thing is, again, when you buy these parks, you have to have a town hall meeting. You want everybody to know, hey, this is us. This is who we are. This is how we buy parks. This is our rules. You will abide by these rules, right? If you don't like it, then you need to let me know now. So if we have to evict someone that owns a home, there's a fine line. Every state has its, you know, regulations. You know, we're use Alabama, for instance. Sure. Very landlord friendly stuff. You don't have to evict anyone because they're not paying you. You can evict anyone for any reason. I mean, you just say, I don't want you to be at my park or in my apartment or whatever. You, you can evict someone. Right. We don't do that, but if we're having a problem, we handle it. So we can do one of two ways. One way is we can do cash for keys. I'll buy the home from you. You know, you won't have to go to court. You won't have to get an eviction on your record. And at least you'll get some money for your home. Because if we go to court, we're going to win. You're going to be without a home. And then it's going to be in our part. And we're going to tear it down. Right. We're going to tear it out. and We're going to bring a new home. In. So let's help you win on this situation, too. So that way we can both walk away with something. Right. And if they don't agree with that, 90% of them will, Chris, 90% of them will. You have to have 100% conviction in your voice when you talk and you sure. hold these conversations. And if you have one that fights you because they're just, you know, not working with you, you win and then you'll tear their home out of the park. Uh, or if it's a decent home, you can rent it. So you literally can capture the title to these homes yeah. after you've gone through court on eviction if they don't move them. Yeah. And what I do is normally I'll work a deal out with them and they'll sell the home to me for a very good price. It's good for them and us. And we'll get them to write it over to us. I mean, wow. almost 95% of the times they'll do that. So there's only a small chance that that doesn't happen.